Okay, thank you for joining. Yes. Let's start the CNI recap and update. I'm Tomohumi Hayashi from Red Hat, and I'm Casey Calandrello from Isovalent. Okay, let's go to the uh, today's agenda. So, they first quickly introduce the, this, what the CNI is, and then after that, the update since the year 2020 from, and then 2021, which means the CNI spec version one recap and next version CNI 1.1 update. Okay, let's go to this stuff. Uh, yep, as I described, told, I'm Tomohumi, and then. I'm Casey Calandrello, I'm a CNI maintainer as well, and I've been working on the project since about 2015. Yep, okay. So, when I look in the uh, KubeCon, the North America and the EU, the last CNI update seems to be the 2020 August at the KubeCon EU introduction to CNI. And this means the uh, maybe roughly four years is passed. And what's happened roughly? The first CNI spec version one is up the released at the August of the 2021. And after that, we do uh, eight plugin versions are released. I mean, the uh, eight CNI uh, plugins in the CNCF CNI project from version 1.0 to version 1.4.1. Last, last one is the, uh, just released at the last week. And then now we are March 22nd, 2024. We do step up and then after that, in some day, CNI spec 1.1.0 will be released. Let's see. So before that, uh, let's go to the uh, overview of the CNI. This is the uh, yeah, just diagram of this stuff. So CNI is uh, applicable to Kubernetes, but uh, this uh, CNI is independent from the uh, Kubernetes. So this is, uh, more abstracted. I mean, at the left side, we have the uh, container. Maybe that this is gonna be the part in the Kubernetes context. Then, methods or motors or cry or container D using the lib CNI to invoking the CNI plugin. So based on the uh, user's provided the CNI config JSON file, uh, CNI plugin will create an interface for you. From the logical components perspective, CNI is uh, provide the attachment to network. I mean, that the, uh, this means the CNI config mentions how to attach the network, not how to create the network. And also the, from the specification point of view, CNI uh, specification allows to you to multiple attachment uh, to the container. And then of course, multiple uh, attachment may connect to the uh, several multiple networks, such as the network A and the two is the network B. So CNI protocol is written in the JSON. We have the two types of the, uh, conf the JSON file. One is the CNI request. We may send the uh, CNI config usually, and also CNI response. In spec, we describe it about as the uh, CNI result. So each Config and the result, we have the CNI version to specify the which CNI spec version is used. For each CNI version, we have a several field uh, and a format as well. So they have, if you uh, know about that, then please take a look into that the spec uh, document in GitHub repository. So mainly the CNI have the uh, uh, verbs. We email uh, saying the commands in the spec. We have the three commands add and the del and the check. Add is attaching the container to the network. Del is the detaching the content from network. So the, uh, when you're launching the pod, the add is used. And then when you removing the pod, del is used. So check is the verified attachment. I mean that the uh, check checks the uh, interface attribute such as the IP address or some stuff to verify the uh, uh, this interface is the expected state or not. So as I told, so the uh, August 2021, yeah, roughly three years ago, CNI spec version 1.0 uh, is released. This is, of course, first major version. So the previous version, I mean, at the 040, we have uh, slightly changed it. They, uh, but also the little bit big changes. That is the dot uh, conf is deprecated. So previously at the uh, spec version 040, we have support the two types of configuration. One is the conf, and another is the conf list. Conf is the single uh, configuration as I described in the left side, but the, uh, at the uh, 
spec version 1.0 only supports the conflict, which is the plug-ins array, which we say in the chaining format. So if you're introducing the CNI spec version 1.0 to your environment, please check that the configuration file, which end with the conflict instead of the conf, and then the plug-ins field is used to describe the each CNI config, uh, configuration. Um, let's go to the uh, version one. Go ahead, Casey. Sure, so uh, three, fast forward three long years, and uh, the CNI project is moving forward. We're about to release version 1.1 of the specification. Um, 1.1 is an incremental improvement. It brings a lot of changes that people have requested, some small, some large. The data types that are defined in CNI are going to be improved, so the data types are richer. Uh, the verbs that are provided is increasing by a whole, by two, yes. And uh, we have version negotiation, so we've like reached TLS 1.1 in terms of feature functionality. <laughs> uh, let's look at the, the two verbs, because I think these will be most useful to the broader ecosystem. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with this particular little uh, quirk of Kubernetes, but uh, you've probably all seen node status not ready, network not ready. And like, where does, the Kuber, where does the kubelet get that information from? It gets it from the runtime. And where does the runtime get that information from? There's one bit of information, which is, does there exist a file in a directory? Um, which is kind of awkward. Like, we have APIs now. We can move on from this. So CNI 1.1 introduces the status verb. It has a very specific meaning, which is, is this plugin ready to accept add requests? So it replaces this write a file for readiness dance. It also gets rid of the case where if you want to go transition back to not ready, you delete the file. And then if you delete the file, you can't, do, you can't delete containers. And then if you can't delete containers, you have an unmanageable node. So uh, finally, we have solved an actual problem. This is uh, super, super exciting. That little bit of like chop wood carry water that makes Kubernetes incrementally better. The other major verb that is being added to CNI 1.1 is garbage collection. So the runtime, which in this case, containerd multis uh, cryo, uh, gives the CNI plugin or plugins a list of valid attachments. And the plugins can then use this as an opportunity to delete extraneous resources by some sort of mark and sweep or garbage collection, right? And the extraneous resources that often get left behind are IP tables rules or most critically, IPAM entries, right? Stale IPAM entries are no fun. Uh, running out of IP addresses is a disastrous event for a node. Uh, so CNI 1.1, new exciting verbs, solving real problems three years at a time. Um, the next steps for CNI 1.1, uh, so we have an RC1 that's been cut. We are working on, we, CNI is a protocol, there's two sides to a protocol, you need to have a client and a server, you need to have a client and a provider. So the community plugins that are provided by the CNI project, like Bridge and Mac VLAN, uh, that PR has been filed, we should have 1.1 support for that merged shortly. Um, likewise, the new verbs, however, also need to be implemented by the runtime. So those four boxes back on slide number three, cryo, container demultis, and mesos, also need to be updated and take a release in order to expose these verbs, right? Um, a more interesting question, okay, that's the path forward, right? An interesting question, though, is like, when can I use the new result fields? We now report MTU, we report more information on route, we even report socket path for socket-based devices, if your plugin particularly implements that. It's like, when can I use these new result fields? Uh, that's where it gets a little bit more complicated. And it's good that we have all the right people in this room to talk about this, right? CNI is one part of an ecosystem. Uh, I use the word ecosystem a lot in this talk, which is like a little bit of a trope, but here we are anyways. If you look on the screen, there are, uh, 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 there are eight boxes, <laughs> right? And like, what do most people create? They create pods, or they even create abstractions on top of a pod. Um, like, like uh, yes, okay, uh, I see some of you are saying, I only see um, five boxes. Like, yes, right, these are also boxes. The boxes in the bottom are what? They're types, they're APIs, they're the contract that people talk, right? So we have now added, a new field here. That still leaves us one, two, three, four, five, six things that need to take a change. Um, and so this is a call out to the community, right? Like it's unfortunate that the information that people want, which is to say more richer result types, is buried behind three APIs and five components. 
that's the role we have, right? Like, it's cool that we have pluggable components that are composable, and that has a really, a really serious advantage. It's a rich ecosystem, lots of networking providers. Like, that's how my salary is paid. But it also comes with a cost, right? Anytime you add an integration point, you've added a standard. And anytime you add a standard, you've added a point of friction. So an open question that I hope the hallway track will resolve, since we're not going to resolve it right now, is like, how do we better align the CNI with its end users like way over here? And like vice versa, right? How do we align the users of CNI, which is to say all these components off to the left, with CNI itself, right? And there's no obvious answer. There's no obvious answer here to this question. There's probably the most interesting thing that might come out of this talk is how can we phrase this question better? Right, so let's do the CRI. Match this to the CRI. That's one in the middle here. Like more closely match the CNI. How can I use these shiny new fields? Um, one of the things that is actively happening is the Kubernetes multi-networking working group. And that's proposing, among many other things, a richer pod status, which is like, great, let's do it. Like, let's not be afraid to change the pod object. It only took us three years. Like, you can do it too. <laughs> So, um, great, we're going to ship 1.1 sometime in the next week or two. What's next? Let's look forward. Um, the first, let's talk, we'll talk specifics first. Right? So, v1.2, uh, an almost certainly definite minor improvement, or not minor, improvement that's coming in is drop-in directories. So, uh, if you're experienced, CNI supports chaining, which is to say, in the context of a single network, a single network interface, you can provide composable actions on that. A classic example is setting up bandwidth limitations. Um, a more interesting, or a more subtle example is setting up IP tables rules for um, sidecar containers for service meshes. Uh, and right now, in order to do this, it's like a bunch of JQ duct tape, which is ugly. Um, Systemd has shown us the way. Drop-in directories are like an obvious improvement to this resource. If you're gonna have configuration files, you should also have configuration directories. So there's a PR after CNI 1.1 will cut, we'll merge this PR, and 1.2 will have drop-in directories. And we are now at like systemd 2010 level of, of, of usability. Um, that's definite. Uh, likely candidate for CNI 1.1, the, the issue is filed, the PR will follow shortly, is metadata. So arbitrary key value pairs as opposed to a strict result type. As it stands right now, the CNI result type is, is rigid. There's no fields allowed outside of it. Um, we try and have a low barrier for adding fields, but that is an expensive operation. As I showed a few slides back, there's a lot of components that have to uptake CNI in order to get past one little string from here to there. Um, so we try to have a low barrier for adding fields. The barrier is not zero, though, and so there are legitimate use cases and cool proposals for adding arbitrary key value pairs to the result type, and I think we're going to have to do it. So this is a quite likely addition to, C to version 1.2. Uh, as with all these things, if you have opinions about this, please come and yell at me afterwards, because I really do want to hear it. Um, what's next? Like, okay, that's 1.2. Probably not much more is going to go into 1.2 than that. Uh, what can we do beyond this? One is gRPC. This is very, it's simultaneously extremely interesting and also not that interesting. It's very interesting because, like, it is now 2024 and we should probably not just exact things for a protocol. Um, but also, if the API is the exact same shape, then like it's an implementation detail how you actually execute the plugin, right? So for a few people, this would be very interesting. For the average Kubernetes user, hopefully this is not that interesting, maybe a bit easier to use. Um, another thing that I would like, we would really significant, seriously like community feedback on is, do we support dynamic reconfiguration? As it stands right now, the specification is extremely clear. You may only do one add for a particular attachment. Um, an add is not expected to be item potent. Uh, and so that means that the runtime is responsible for generating all edges, as it were. Um, but the spec says this. It's just words. We could change this. Um, is this something you're interested in? It has advantages and disadvantages. If so, like, please reach out, come to the community. We meet, we, we meet weekly, and we are engaged in issues. Um, if we don't do dynamic configuration, that offers up an opportunity for another really powerful verb, which is finalize. All right, so CNI is quite explicit that there are multiple attachments to multiple networks in a single container or pod or pod sandbox, pick your verb, pick your noun. Um, there is a pretty strong use case for some sort of meta 
cleanup or meta-finalization verb that is not allowed to create interfaces, but it is allowed to modify the state of the networking inside the container or on the host, right? This is some sort of finalize. And what it would be an example of finalization is, say, an absolute route resolution cleanup phase where you make sure that the routing table is exactly what you would like it to be. Um, or you could have a, if you are also doing, if your chained plugin is manipulating things not in the context of an interface, say for example, you are attaching a service mesh, then you would find this interesting because you want to finalize and you want to add your IP tables rules at the absolute end and you don't care about the interfaces that were coming and you are not really manipulating an in-progress interface creation. So finalize is a huge win and we probably should do it, but if we say at some point in time that the network is finished being configured, that closes out the possibility of doing dynamic reconfiguration. So given that Kubernetes pods are mostly immutable, except for all the mutability that they have, pods are mostly immutable, um, finalize is probably the more natural fit, but it's a debate, right? Like it's an open, it's up for the community to decide. Uh, and then the last idea that we have been talking about that is extremely loose is some notion of config auto-generation or another way of shaping this is some sort of registration. Um, Plugin dynamic registration is, there is a precedent for this in Kubernetes, both devices and storage register themselves with the kubelet. Uh, C and I can work this way as well. The problem as it stands right now is that network configuration is explicitly not a part of Kubernetes. So what happens if you have multiple possible plugins? Then you have some sort of registration race. So the corner cases quickly fall into utter disarray. Um, this is probably not gonna happen unless we make, as a community, decide that like network attachment and network ownership, Dan Winship is smiling and as he should, <laughs> uh, is a, an explicit part of the Kubernetes API. So this is a huge community question to resolve. Um, it's possibility. That's why we're here to talk at KubeCon to talk about possibilities. Oh, there we go. Even had a slide on it, right? Like, so Kubernetes does not define network configuration. Maybe it should. The hallway track of this is, for this conference has been extremely dynamic, and I hope that we resolve this uh, because it's going to be, this is an exciting dynamic time. So that's actually it for our presentation. Some closing thoughts. CNI is a small part of a big world, right? It's a small part of a big conference. Uh, it, it's pretty cool in and of that it has no single vendor driving it. Like, you cannot buy CNI Enterprise Edition. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can buy, like, me, I guess, but that's about it. <laughs> uh, CNI is also extraordinarily simple, right? It's really easy to improve, and I'm honestly embarrassed to come up here and say that it's taken us three years to ship two new verbs. But that's it, right? There's no Enterprise CNI, or there's no CNI Enterprise Edition, so things move at the pace of, of open source. So, like, reach out, join the community, let's make things more fun, let's make things more exciting, like... Let's have, let's solve real problems, right? Reach out to us, we're on GitHub. There's a CNCF Slack, we have two channels. Not really sure why. We have a weekly meeting, which is open to everybody. I'll make sure that details are posted on our homepage. Um, the CNI, CNI is all of us. Oop. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much.